Hello anatomy friends, this is Dr. Alsup, and in our last video for this learning objective video for this session, we will be discussing where those spinal nerves will exit the intervertebral foramina, and we'll also talk a little bit about herniated discs or those herniated intervertebral foramina and how that might affect some of these spinal nerves. Okay, so let's get an idea of where spinal nerves are exiting the vertebral column. And we've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but let's just make sure we understand. Those spinal nerves, or specifically those spinal nerve trunks and their primary rami, are going to exit through the intervertebral foramina. And recall that is going to be that inferior notch with that superior notch creating this foramen. And in the lower portions of the, the vertebral column, the spinal nerves will notably exit in the superior portions of the foramen. So you can see it's going to be in the superior portion, leaving this inferior portion um, mostly empty. That's not going to be the case in, say, the cervical region, which those uh, vertebrae are a little bit smaller, so the intervertebral foramina will also be smaller. Um, but we'll come back to this concept in a moment. But for now, let's understand that they are traveling through the intervertebral foramina. And typically, they are going to exit the intervertebral foramen inferior to the same number vertebra. So your L3 spinal nerve will exit at this intervertebral foramen and not, say, the one here between L2 and L3. All right? So L2 would be coming through this region. L3 in this intervertebral foramen, and L4 would be through this one, and the L5 vertebra would be here, okay? So it's going to be inferior to that same number vertebra, not superior. But there's always gonna be an exception, and that exception is going to be in the cervical region, and that has a lot to do with the fact that we have eight cervical spinal nerves and only seven cervical vertebrae. So the cervical spinal nerves will exit the intervertebral foramen superior to the same numbered vertebra. So that is because C1, the C1 spinal nerve, is going to exit above C, the C1 vertebra. And then you can see kind of from there on, here is the C1 vertebra, here's the C2 spinal nerve, and so on. And then that ends with C8, that's that eighth cervical spinal nerve exiting between C7 and T1, as you can see here, the intervertebral foramen between C7 and T1. Um, and then we pick up that typical pattern. So you can see T1 spinal nerve exiting below the T1 vertebra. And same thing for here. Here is T2. The T2 uh, spinal nerve will exit below or inferior to that and similar to what we saw with the lumbar vertebrae. So that explains kind of how we deal with the exit of eight cervical spinal nerves with only seven cervical vertebrae, and um, you can get an understanding of that exception to the rule. Now, why we care about where these spinal nerves exit are a few reasons, but, in, but one of them that we're gonna discuss now are intervertebral disc herniations. And what will occur is that nucleus pulposus will often exit or herniate through the annulus fibrosus. And typically, that herniation will occur posterior laterally. Posterior laterally. So this is towards the posterior region, and this would be away from the midline, so laterally. It could um, reach that intervertebral foramen region, so it could directly affect the spinal nerves that are in that general region. It could also affect the spinal cord, depending on how posterior it goes and if it went a little medially as well. Um, but this is a reason why we care about this, because there could be compression of nerves in intervertebral foramina. So which spinal nerve would an IV disc herniation affect? Well, let's use this example of uh, in the lumbar region because herniations are more common in the lumbar region, not to say that they can't happen in other regions, but they are mo more common in the lumbar. So say we had a herniation of the intervertebral disc between L3 and L4. So 
Here is that intervertebral disc between L3 and L4, and it is going to herniate posterior and often laterally, which would be kind of in this direction. So recall that we talked about how the um, spinal nerves typically will exit the intervertebral foramen superior in the superior portion of that intervertebral foramen. So it will likely, if you had a herniation here at this intervertebral disc, it would likely not affect the L3 spinal nerve as it is exiting too superior to be affected by the herniation. It may affect the L4 spinal nerve that is exiting more inferiorly, okay? So oftentimes um, you could have that herniation affecting the more inferior spinal nerve just because you miss that herniation because of that superior exit of that spinal nerve here. So you can kind of see L3 is being spared that compression, whereas L4 could be compressed. And this is something that will come up again, um, particularly when we get to the neuro portion of the course or of your year, as well as the musculoskeletal portion. But I want to introduce it here um, because it's an important concept. Now, this, as I said, is going to be true in terms of the lumbar region or the thoracic region. Um, sacral region, we wouldn't have those intervertebral discs. But the cervical region, there's less space in those intervertebral foramen, so typically you would kind of affect directly um, whatever spinal nerve is exiting through here. So you wouldn't have a superior and inferior portion of the intervertebral foramen. That spinal nerve is pretty much taking up much of that space, so it would directly affect that region. Okay, excellent. So here is your summary in terms of how these spinal nerves are exiting the intervertebral foramina and in which region. And we really had a focus on, excuse me, these spinal, the cervical re region because it's always an exception to a rule and we always love an exception and understanding that. So take time to review this. This typically tends to be an area that is conceptually difficult. So as always, as you work through it and you have any follow-up questions, please always feel free to reach out to, any, to me or any of my colleagues. And I want to thank you for your time and attention with these learning objective videos. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks.